Welcome to Travel Behavior, Principles and Modeling Approaches. This course will help you understand the basics of travel behavior, why do people travel, how do they make decisions about travel, and then how we try and represent that travel in models of various types. My name is Rick Wilson. I'm a professor in the Department of Urban and Regional Planning at Cal Poly Pomona. I've been teaching there for quite some time. I also do consulting in parking management and transit oriented development. For my PhD dissertation many years ago, I did a multinomial logit model of commuter mode choice, looking at the sensitivity of choices to paying for parking. So why do we need to understand travel behavior? Well, I think there's three systems. First, we want to make predictions. So, for example, preparing a regional transportation plan, we want to predict the level of traffic volumes associated with population and economic growth. Second, we want to test plans, such as a regional transportation plan, or improvements, such as a proposal for a light rail line. And third, we need to understand the interrelationships of systems, such as how travel interacts with land use systems, environmental systems, and social systems. So often we use an economic approach to understanding the basis for travel. And these are models that assume economic rationality, that the traveler is a utility maximizer who's going to choose travel modes, travel distances, and so on that best suit their needs. Occasionally, qualitative approaches, experimental approaches, and post hoc evaluations are done to provide more richness of insight. So an example question that a model could deal with is, what if an employer switches from offering free parking at the work site to charging for it? Will travel behavior change? Will the people that work at that work site start using transit or carpooling or other modes more frequently? Or will it have no effect? And so economic theory suggests that commuters are responsive to the cost of their commute but that cost is a complex element that includes out-of-pocket money costs, time costs, uncertainty costs, and so on. And also that responsiveness to price might vary by income, family stage, or attitudes. So that's an example of a question that a transportation model might be employed to answer. In this course, we will examine the basis for travel demand, which is overcoming spatial distances between activity places. We'll quickly look at some basic facts about urban travel. I will introduce the four-step transportation models that are commonly in use at regional levels across the country. We will critique the weaknesses of the four-step model. I will introduce activity-based models, a different approach to modeling and conclude with a review of contemporary transportation challenges. So why do we need this course? Contemporary transportation challenges require new modeling approaches. The traditions of the four-step model is that it has rather simplistic behavioral understanding. In other words, the core reason for choices is represented in a relatively simple way. And it was really created to answer capacity questions. Should we build a freeway here? How big should the freeway be? where should the freeway go? They're not as well suited to environmental justice, active transportation, and pricing questions, which are increasingly things that we're addressing. And a simple way to summarize the intent of the four-step model is predict and provide. Predict travel demands and then plan facilities to accommodate them. Nowadays, we're seeking to understand individual travel behavior in a more detailed way. Because we are looking at a wider range of policy options, not just responding to a transportation congestion problem, let's say, by building or widening a road, but looking at ways of managing the demand for travel. Once we get into that area, we're in a much more complex territory of understanding the motivations for travel to know whether the intervention will work. The other thing is working at more of a disaggregate level of the individual household or the individual traveler to understand the dimensions of choice and what fine-grained improvements such as a bike share program would mean for travel behavior. So the new approach to modeling is much more scenario-based and modeling that supports policy decisions as well as capital investment decisions. So let's begin.